is fresh manna. Glad to have you here tonight. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late. I had a little bit of technical difficulty coming on. I'm saying that just so the powers that be at HAPS um, are aware that there's some difficulties coming on here. And uh, But I'm glad to uh, have you all here tonight. And we're going to be talking a little bit about the treasure that is in your hand. The treasure that is in your hand. And uh, we could definitely go a few different ways, I'm realizing now with that. But... Um, <clears throat> But I do have a plan, a purpose. And uh, so hopefully, um, you know, it's going to be a blessing to you. Hey, how you doing, Mary? How's everything up in New Paul's? Hallelujah. We had a little bit nicer day today, didn't we? I'm telling you, today was a nice, uh, nicer day. Yesterday was for a reason, but today today was, uh, was much more uh, uh, hopefully getting closer to spring like right much much nicer much much nicer right uh, at least I thought so anyway right well let's go ahead and worship the Lord I might do a couple of songs tonight I don't know we'll see mm -hmm. much better today right I'm telling you what so much nicer getting out there and not feeling like you're uh, huddled against the uh, frigid north winds blowing in your face and uh, running around so your poor uh, little mini poodle doesn't freeze or a little touchy off. So. <laughs> You are beautiful beyond description, Lord, too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of your love? You are beautiful beyond description, majesty enthroned above. And I stand, I stand in awe of you, Lord, I stand, I stand in awe of you, holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of your love? You are beautiful beyond description, majesty enthroned above. And I stand, I stand in awe of you, Lord, I stand, I stand in awe of you, holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in Lord, I stand, I stand in all of you. Lord, I stand, I stand in all of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in all of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in all. Amen. Amen. And I, I honestly do. I stand in awe of, of a God who, in spite of all the failures that we are and the things that we do, he still loves us and he was willing to suffer and die that we might spend eternity with him. I tell you what, I don't know many human beings that be willing to go to that length 
for anyone that they loved, right? Although we see, we've seen many people that give up their lives as martyrs for their faith and trust in the Lord, right? Let's do another one. His name is nigh, an ointment poured forth, a fragrance rare, a wonderful oil. His name is nigh, an ointment poured forth, his wonderful, wonderful. His name is like an ointment poured forth, a fragrance rare, a wonderful oil. His name is like an ointment poured forth, his wonderful, wonderful. those songs they bring you they bring you back they're old enough that they have a lot of memories for me that one was written by a gentleman who uh often taught at the youth with a mission uh, places where we did our i don't know if you're familiar with youth with a mission but it's an organization that was actually founded to send young people onto the mission field um, as teenagers and all of that. And then it extended to include, um, they had schools of discipleship schools, discipleship training schools for the teenagers. And then it extended to having young adults, college students, and then and then um, other, other people were full-fledged adults beyond uh, school. Um, also, we're craving to um, uh, be part of those schools. And so they did what was called the Crossroads Discipleship Training School. And I was part of one of those in Pennsylvania, north of Williamsport, Pennsylvania, in a little place called Roaring Branch. And um, one of the gentlemen that came uh, to teach us also wrote songs and was known as a worship leader. He's pretty well known in those days. Don't ask me his name. I'm having a little bit of failure to remember names and I feel terrible about that. But uh, he was pretty well known in those days and uh, that was one of his songs. The ointment song was uh, one of his songs. And uh, uh, but uh, he was he was really a special guy, one of those tender hearted uh, type of gentlemen, you know, just soft, soft, soft kind of a guy. Right. Uh, just so like you could imagine that the Apostle John would be like that when you see that, that the scriptures talk about John just laying on Jesus's like just on his chest and just hanging in there. Well, this guy was sort of like that. He had that sort of a soft tender quality to him you know and uh whenever i sing that worship song i think of him and and uh, think about his heart for the lord that very tender heart and you know that um, his view of jesus's name being an ointment being that thing that brings healing and and so much comfort to us right 
So, um, but tonight I want to talk a little bit about, um, about the um, treasure in your hand. And this um, idea to talk about this came, um, as usual, I was um, spending some time in the word this morning and I um, was reading, um, I want to make sure I'm in the right uh, thing here. I was reading Exodus 35 and 36. And I thought I'd read that to you. And then I'll share with you what God was sort of showing me as I, as I read this. And um, hopefully, again, it's going to be an encouragement to you to realize how important we each are to him and to accomplishing his purposes in the earth, right? We all have a part to play. We all have a part to play. Okay, so Exodus 35. Then Moses assembled all the congregation of B'nai Israel. I'm reading the Tree of Life version of the scriptures. And so it includes some uh, phrases in Hebrew. B'nai Israel is the people of Israel. Then Moses assembled all the congregation of B'nai Israel and said to them, these are the words which Adonai, the Lord, has commanded you to do. Work is to be done for six days, but the seventh day is a holy day for you. A Shabbat of complete rest to Adonai, a day, if you will, I just thought of this. It's sort of like the day, a day of leaning on Jesus's chest and just kind of hanging back there and just absorbing his presence. I uh, was listening to a teaching by, um, I believe his name is Rick Rayner. And he was talking about something that the Lord was dealing with him um, on. And he said that, um, he said that, that um, often um, to absorb the Lord's presence, his, his presence, sometimes what's required is just to become quiet before him, just to become quiet before him. And, and that's what Shabbat is about. Shabbat is a day of being restored in the presence of the Lord. That's what it was. Restoration, the restoration of God's presence, the Lord said to Rick. He said, he said, my restoring presence comes only when you're quiet and still before me. And so he said, I ended up spending like I'd spend five minutes here, 10 minutes here. But every day I spent time soaking and, and just being quiet in the presence of the Lord. And, and he said, and, and over time, the Lord restored me. I'd been through a lot of uh, giving out in ministry. And the Lord said, you don't even realize it, but you've taken a lot of hits for the kingdom lately. And he said, he said, so you need, he says, and he said, that's why you're full of anxiety. He said, I want to remove that. And that requires my restoring presence. And what you need to do is just set aside time and be quiet before me. And I think Shabbat, um, should include is is meant to be at least in part a time to go quiet before the Lord and allow Him to restore you. Allow Him to restore you. So work is to be done for six days, but the seventh day is a holy day for you, a Shabbat of complete rest to Adonai. Whoever does any work then will die. Do not kindle a fire in any of your dwellings on. Yom Shabbat, or on the day, on Sabbath day. Yom just means day. You can't find me on find me on half Shep. Okay, well, I I, I changed my um, my name to Sue the Word Woman, so that might be it. I changed my name to Sue the Word Woman, so that when they um, sent me something, they didn't say they didn't say hello the. Because I had put the word the in the place where my first name was. And so I switched it to Sue the Word Woman so that when I go on other broadcasts, people know immediately what my name is. So um, so it makes it easier. So I'm sorry, uh, Shep. Uh, thank you for thank you for subscribing. You found me then. Good. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Okay. So we're talking about the treasure in your hand tonight, Shep. So um, and I'm reading Exodus 35 and 36. 
in the Tree of Life version of the scriptures. It's a Messianic Jewish uh, translation of the scriptures. And uh, so here we go. So do not kindle a fire in any of your dwellings on Yom Shabbat or on the Sabbath day. Moses also said to all the congregation of B'nai Yisrael, this is the word which Adonai commanded saying, take from among you an offering for Adonai. Whoever has a willing heart, let him bring Adonai's offering, gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet cloth, fine linen and goat hair, ram skins dyed red, seal skins and acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the sweet incense, onyx stones and setting stones for the ephod and for the bread and for the breastplate. Oh, thank you for that high award. Thank you, Chef. Let every wise-hearted man among you come and make everything that Adonai has commanded, including the tabernacle, its tent and its covering, its clasps and its boards, its crossbars, its pillars, and its bases, the ark and the poles, the atonement cover, and the curtain screen, the table and its poles with all its utensils, along with the bread of the presence, also the menorah for light with its utensils, its lamps and the oil for the light, the altar of incense and its poles, the anointing oil, the sweet incense, and the screen for the entrance of the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering with its grating of bronze, its poles and all its utensils, the basin and its stand, the hangings on the courtyard, the pillars in their bases, and the curtain for the gate of the courtyard, the pegs of the tabernacle and of the courtyard, along with their cords, the woven garments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest and for his sons to minister as priests. Then all the congregation of B'nai Israel departed from before Moses and everyone whose heart stirred him and everyone whose spirit was willing came and brought Adonai's offering for the work of the tent of meeting and for all its service as well as for the holy garments. So they came, both men and women, everyone whose heart compelled him, and they brought nose rings and earrings and signet rings and bracelets and all kinds of golden jewels. Everyone who brought a wave offering of gold to add an eye. Everyone who had blue, purple, scarlet, fine linen, goat hair, Ram skins, dyed red or seal skins brought them. And everyone who could make a contribution of silver or bronze brought Adonai's offering. And every man who had acacia wood of any use for service brought it. Also, all the women who were wise hearted spun with their hands and brought what they had woven, the purple, blue, scarlet and fine linen. All the women whose hearts stirred them up with wisdom spun the goat hair. Also, the leaders brought onyx stones and setting stones for the ephod and for the breastplate, along with the spice, the oil for the light, and for anointing and for the sweet incense. Every man and woman whose heart made them willing gave toward all the work that Adonai had commanded to be done by Moses' hand. So B'nai Israel brought it as a freewill offering to Adonai. Then Moses said to B'nai Israel, See, Adonai has called by name Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. He has filled him with the Ruach, or the Spirit of God, with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge in all manner of craftsmanship, to make ingenious designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, as well as cutting gemstones for setting wood carving to make all kinds of skillful craftsmanship. He has also placed in his heart the ability to teach, both he and Oholiab, son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan. 
He has filled them with wisdom of heart to forge all the works of engraver, an artisan and an embroiderer in blue, purple, scarlet, and in fine linen, as well as weaving. They can perform every craft and ingenious designs. Sorry. <clears throat> One more, sorry, I had to go backwards. So Bezalel and Aholiab are to work along with every wise hearted man in whom Adonai has placed insight and understanding to know how to perform all the labor for the service of the sanctuary according to everything Adonai has commanded. Then Moses called Bezalel, Aholiab, and all the wise-hearted men in whose minds Adonai had set wisdom, along with everyone whose heart stirred him to come and do the work. Hey, Anthony, God bless you. They received from Moses the entire offering that B'nai Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to build it. They brought free will offerings to him morning after morning. Then all the skilled men who were doing all the work of the sanctuary came one by one from the work he was doing and said to Moses, the people are bringing much more than enough for the work of this construction that Adonai has commanded to be done. So Moses gave an order and they proclaimed it throughout the camp saying, let neither man nor woman make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing more for the work material they had was sufficient for all the work with much left over. So all the wise hearted men among them did the work. They made the tabernacle with 10 curtains of finely twisted linen, along with blue, purple, and scarlet with cherubim, the work of a skillful craftsman. The length of each curtain was 28 cubits and the width of each curtain was four cubits. All the curtains had one measure. Then, <clears throat> yes, uh, Anthony, my handle on apps is Sue the Word Woman. Sue the Word Woman. Okay, so then he coupled five curtains to one another and the other five curtains he also coupled together. He made blue loops on the edge of the curtain that was outermost within the first set. He did the same along the edge of the curtain that was outermost in the second set. He made 50 loops in one curtain 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that was in the second set so that, the, so that the loops were opposite to one another. Also, he made 50 clasps of gold and coupled the curtains one to another with clasps. So the tabernacle was one. You're welcome, Anthony. Then he made curtains from goat hair for a tent over the tabernacle. He made 11 curtains. The length of each curtain was 30 cubits and the width of each was four cubits. The 11 curtains had one measure. He coupled five curtains by themselves and six other curtains by themselves. He made 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that was outermost in the first set and 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that was outermost in the second set. Also, he made 50 bronze clasps to couple the tent together so that it would be one. One. Then he made a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red along with a covering of seal skins above. He also made the framework of boards for the tabernacle from acacia wood standing upright. The length of a board was 10 cubits. The width was a cubit and a half. Each board had two supports joined one to another. He did this for all the boards of the tabernacle. So he built the boards for the tabernacle, 20 boards from the south side southward, and he made 40 silver bases under 20 boards two bases under one board for its two supports and two bases under another board for its two supports. Also for the second side of the tabernacle on the north side, he made 20 boards along with their 40 silver bases, two under one board and two under the next. For the back part of the tabernacle westward, he made six boards. He also made two boards for the corners of the tabernacle in the back so that they could be doubled underneath and in the same way to be fixed to the top at the first ring. He did this for both of them at two corners. So there were eight boards along with their silver bases, 16 in all, two under each board. Then he made crossbars from acacia wood 
five for the boards on one side of the tabernacle, five for the boards on the other side of the tabernacle, and five crossbars for the boards of the tabernacle for the back part westward. He built the middle crossbar to pass through in the center of the boards from one end to the other. He and he overblade the boards with gold and made golden rings for them as holders for the crossbars and overlaid the crossbars with gold. Then he made the curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet and finely twisted linen, along with the cherubim, the work of a skillful craftsman. He made four pillars of acacia and overlaid them with gold, having golden hooks, and he cast four silver, ba silver bases for them. Then he made a paraquette for the entrance of the tent of blue, purple, and scarlet, and finely twisted linen, the work of a color weaver. Also he made the five pillars with their hooks and overlaid their capitals and their bands with gold along with their five bronze bases. Well, certainly they, they keep saying he, 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 but of course we know that it was a whole group of people that were coming together to build the tabernacle that the Lord had instructed for them to make this place where the high priest could come in and minister to the Lord, where they could bring sacrifices to the Lord for forgiveness of sins, where they could have a place, a holy place, where they could come in and meet with the Lord and hear from the Lord and be cleansed of unrighteousness, right? But in order to make this temple wasn't the work of just one or a few people who had certain special talents. Bezalel may have had super special talents in art, and we think that's great, right? And um, other people had, had skills of weaving, and other people had skills of making these beautiful angels that go over. I'm sure you've seen pictures of the of the Ark of the Covenant and how the how the angels are bent over it with their wings coming down like this over the top of the of the of the ark, right? And all and, and these are wonderful, but none of that could be done without the gifts of each individual person in the thousands of people that made up the children of Israel, right? There were all different people, many, many people, and each brought what they could. Each brought the thing that was from them. If they had some gold, we know that when they left Israel, they were given gold and silver and other other gifts as they were leaving. They were given things. You know, the Lord just gave them favor with their neighbors and their neighbors gave them all these beautiful things and they were able to take these beautiful things with them. And then they were able, they had these things. And so they were giving of these beautiful things, the things that they had to the Lord. But it was whatever they happened to have. Some of them gave financially. We we hear that you know some of the the them gave silver and gold. Some of them gave um, different types of um, of goat hair. Some of them gave you know other kinds of linens, other kinds of dyes, so that they could make it blue and purple and scarlet. Right. Uh, some of them gave oil, or they gave maybe they had olives. Right. Whatever it was. They gave what they had and, and all of it together came together so that the temple could be built so that they could have this sanctuary. The sanctuary couldn't exist apart from the participation of each person. And the reason I'm saying this is that the same is true today in God's kingdom. Every one of us has a gift, has a talent, has an ability. Some of them are, are, are gifts, talents, and abilities that bring more attention, that sparkle maybe more than others. But each one of them, whether you're somebody who's cleaning up after services on Sunday, whether you are someone that is um, 
uh, doing acts of service where you're working. Like I'm sure there were guys that were just doing smelting in the fire to purify, to make the gold pure, right? I'm sure there were people doing all that kind of hard, stinky labor, right? And there were, there were people taking care of the goats, where the goat's hair came from, right? Those are, those are things they might've said, well, that's just sort of ordinary stuff. But ordinary becomes extraordinary when we do it in worship and adoration of the Lord. And that's what the Lord says. Anybody that's being stirred, bring what, what is on your heart to bring. And we all play an important part. So that's what I'm trying to um, encourage you guys with. What is the treasure that is in your hand? When God called Moses to uh, be his spokesperson and to go to um, Pharaoh and to, uh, and to ask that the people of Israel would be set free, Moses said that he, that he, was, he, he didn't think that they would take him seriously. Certainly, he'd already been sort of, you know, even the people of Israel, when he tried to defend them at one point, you know, they didn't understand. They said, like, who are you? Who, who died and made you boss, right? It was that kind of a reaction when he tried to defend them, right? When he saw them being mistreated and he tried to defend them, they didn't understand it, right? So he had some previous experiences that made him sort of say, well, why is Pharaoh going to take me seriously, right? In, in another way, too. Uh, Moses knew Pharaoh. They'd grown up in a way like brothers together, right? Uh, Moses was the adopted, was an adopted son, right? But Pharaoh was the was the blood son, right? And so the two growing up together, and maybe even Pharaoh was jealous of Moses, you know, for attentions that were given to Moses. That why is this why is this Jewish boy sharing my place with me, you know? Um, <clears throat> but um, so but so when Moses, when the Lord said to Moses, go and, you know, speak to Pharaoh for me, Moses was a little bit nervous. And he said, well, how can I do that? I don't, I can't speak well, he said. Like he was very aware of, of you know, what his, what the, the, the the man who was Pharaoh at that time, his gifts, his abilities, he said, boy, next to him, I'm a nobody. I, I can't do this kind of stuff, right? And God said to him, what's that in your hand? And Moses takes, Moses looks, and in his hand is a shepherd's staff. For the last 40 years, while he's been, since he's been run away from, from, uh, from Egypt, and he's been out in the no man's land. He's been, he's now become a shepherd. So he's sort of a low man on the totem pole now. And all he's, he's got this staff he's got, and the staff is what he uses to keep the sheep in line. Interestingly, you know, that it just occurred to me now that, 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 that's sort of like, a, like the staff is almost this, a, a symbol of leadership, really. But he wasn't thinking that. He was thinking, oh, yeah, well, this is just the thing I kind of prod those dumb sheep with to make sure they don't go over the cliff, you know? And I make sure that they go to the place where they can get water because they're dumb. If I don't help them with the staff, forget it. They're going They're going to go wander off somewhere. And, you know, who knows, right? I got to keep them in line, don't I, right, with the staff, right? So God says, okay, so drop that thing on the ground. Basically, he's saying, release that symbol of who you are to me. And when he does, the, the, we know that the staff becomes a, 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 a serpent, right? And it's like, oh my gosh, you know, it like God totally transforms it into something that is just a sign of kind of power in a way. And, and, and Moses freaks out, right? He says, okay, now grab it. Grab it by the tail. I don't know if I would have had, you know, you know, you really kind of have to have a lot of faith to grab a serpent by the tail. You don't want that thing stinging you, right? But that's how Moses reaches out and he grabs it. And when he does, it becomes a staff again. So what is the treasure that God has placed in your hand? What are the gifts that you take as just 
natural as just maybe ordinary, like you think you wouldn't even consider them a gift. They're so much a part of who you are. Like maybe you're good at fixing cars. Maybe you're, maybe you're good at, um, you know, um, electrical engineering. Maybe you're good at, um, you know, I'm, 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 you know, a writer and all that kind of stuff. So I'm good with words. Okay. That's my thing. But don't ask me to fix my car. <laughs> There's no way I'm fixing my car. Okay. I need the gifts and talents of my, of my local mechanic to take a look at my car and make sure it's all right. I also need uh, people that are smart with money to be able to help me to manage my finances. Cause I, I am absolutely stupid when it comes to money. Right counseling. There you go, Anthony. Okay. So that's your gifting is to be able to help people through those, uh, the hurts of their lives. Not everybody can do that, but you have those gifts, those talents and abilities. When you give those gifts and abilities to the Lord, that's your part in the kingdom. Your part, Anthony, is counseling. AJ, I know that you're gifted in music. Your gift to the kingdom is music, right? Um, and uh, and each one of us has a gift, has a talent, has something that comes naturally to us, but that without it, God doesn't have all the parts that he needs. And the body of Christ does not have all the gifts that are needed in order to fulfill his plans and his purposes for the kingdom of God. We all have a part to play. So be encouraged tonight. No matter how ordinary you seem, what is ordinary in your hands, in the hands of God, becomes a powerful element that will help him build his kingdom and cause his kingdom and, and his return to come, right? So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I know that it was thrilling to me. I had just come through a uh, prayer meeting with some friends of mine and the Lord had given each one of us different aspects. We're working on a project together and each one of us had a different piece of the puzzle. And together, as we brought our the different parts of what we had, our ideas and different things together, suddenly it all knit together and we saw where God was taking us. But if one piece had been missing of that puzzle, you know, if you're doing a puzzle, you can't have any piece missing. You Every piece must be there or the puzzle will not be complete. Each one of us have a piece of the puzzle and God wants us to put that piece in. You have an important part to play. Hey, Sev, God bless you. God bless you. I just finished uh, finished my uh, my sharing, so you can uh, catch it uh, another time. It was a little. I ha I came on at eight tonight, so I know that that's a little bit early for you guys out on the west coast out there. Um, but uh, anyway, so um, <clears throat> anybody have any? Prayer requests, any praise reports, or anything of that nature? I'm going to give myself a little bit of a rest here. My mouth's getting a little dry. I usually have something to drink with me, a little bit of water here somewhere, but forgot to do that, so no problem. Sev is a teacher. That's, that's Sev's gift. I was talking, Sev, about... The treasure in our hands is the is the piece of the puzzle. Each one of us have a piece of the puzzle um, that God wants us to supply uh, so that his work can be done in the earth. And usually the piece that we have is something that seems ordinary and just of not much value. But to God, every piece is valuable. Everything we bring is about. Oh, thank you, Mary. God bless you. God bless you. I got to come up and and, uh, and and find out. Mary, do you work? Do you work in a, I think you said you work, do you, do you work in one of the stores up there in, um, in, in New Paltz? My mom and I were there over the summer. We took a drive through because she went to, she went to uh, SUNY New Paltz. You injured your calf? Oh, you're going to the doctor in two weeks for an MRI. Oh, 
Sav, I'm sorry. Father God, we just come before you right now on behalf of Sev, Lord. Father, we ask, Lord, you know, Father, we just we just give his his calf to you right now, Lord. Father, you know what is causing uh, the difficulties, the pains in there, Father. You are the one who knit him together in his mother's womb. And you knit him together. You you know what where what is going on right now with his calf. Father, we ask that even now, Lord, that you would cause, first we ask that you would relax the muscles, the tendons, Lord. Father, any kind of, of veins in there, Lord, would just be relaxed. We just speak peace to them in the name of Jesus. We ask complete healing to just course right through them, Lord, that, Father, um, there would be uh, just even nothing wrong and that they'd come and they'd say, we don't see anything because you would have healed him already, Lord. And we just thank you in advance for healing his calf in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, that's not that's not fun. I know, Seb, that is that is not fun, you know. And you guys know my mom, uh, my mom, you know, broke her broke her wrist, but she's doing she's doing better every day. She gets a little stronger. And so thank God for that. Her uh, her orthopedic surgeon is sort of is really, really amazed at how quickly she is showing um, improvement. So um, we know that that's the Lord. So we're happy about that. And uh, so, and I go for my, um, my first, she's had both her, her vaccines now, both, both vaccines for COVID. And I get my first one on the 15th of March. So can be praying for that, that that will go well. But uh, any, anybody else have any prayer requests? Praise reports. Not I may I may do one more song to to uh, close us out tonight. I feel just feel like uh, <clears throat> like doing that tonight. Yeah, I'm gonna do this one because I think uh, this is good. It's it seems to fit because each one of us has a piece of the puzzle. And now now we need to go out and use the the piece that God gave us, right? Um, she, right now, it's a little too early, Seb, for mom to get a physical therapy. She, she does do like exercises like this. He wants her to just make her fist go in and out, you know, um, but not more than that because it was a serious break. So we're trying to let the bones knit together. Bones be healed in Jesus name, right? Um, so right now she's just making her sort of keep her fingers loose and keep them, you know, flexible and things like that. So that's pretty much all she's doing right now. We'll see the doctor at the end of March. Um, and then I guess he'll tell us more what we can do more than that. You'll see how we're do, how she's doing. And, um, you know, uh, right now I'm pretty much taking care of a lot of aspects of her, uh, you know, of just, you know, cooking and um, cleaning and, you know, doing a lot of things, um, just even just getting her coffee in the morning and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and worship the Lord. I'm going to play one more song and, and then we'll say, I'll say a blessing and we'll, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Go forth, go forth in to the ripened field, for they are white unto our pass. The time, the time of weeping is at hand, for souls of men to be gathered in. What was sown in tears will now be ripped in joy. The word of the Lord will not return void. Cast out your nets, all ye fishers of men, in the power of the Spirit, revival begins. Go forth, go forth into the ripened fields, for they are white unto harvest. The time, the time of reaping is at hand, for souls of men to be gathered in. What was sown in tears will now be reaped in joy. The word of the Lord will not.
not return void. Cast out your nets, all ye fishers of men, in the power of the Spirit, revival begin. Go forth, go forth, into the ripened field, for they are white unto harvest. The time, the time of reaping is at hand, for souls of men to be gathered in. What was sown in tears will now be ripped in joy, the word of the Lord will not return void. Cast out your nets, all ye fishers of men, in the power of the Spirit, revival begin. Go forth, go forth into the ripened field, for they are ripe unto harvest. The time, the time of reaping is at hand, for souls of men to be gathered in. What was sown in tears will now be reaped in joy, the word of the Lord will not return void. Cast out your nets, all ye fishers of men, in the power of the Spirit, revival begins. Amen. So, amen. Father God, help us, O oh Lord, to go forth into the ripened fields, for they are, Lord, they are white unto harvest. The time of reaping is at hand for souls to be gathered in, Lord. What was sown in tears will now be reaped in joy. Your word, O oh Lord, will not return void. So we cast out our nets as fishers of men, and in the power of the Spirit we believe, Father God, for revival to begin. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you've given us, Lord. Father, things that may seem ordinary to us, Lord, become extraordinary in your hands, God. So we give all that we are, all that we, all that we have, all that we can do, all that we just all, all our gifts, all our abilities, Lord. They were your gifts to us. They're what you put inside us, Lord. They're what you fashioned us to be. And Lord, we give them back to you. And Lord, we say, have your way with us, Lord. Help us, O oh Lord, to fully use the piece of the puzzle that you have given to us, knowing, God, that you are pulling all those pieces together, God, that your will would be done and your kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven. Father, I ask that you would bless each one, Father. May the Lord, Lord, may you bless them and keep them. May you cause your face to shine upon each one of us and give us your peace. In Yeshua's name we ask this. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. I'll see you tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. And Jason will be on at 9 p.m. And don't forget that Becky is on at 10 o'clock in the morning, which is 7 a.m. on uh, the uh, <clears throat> on the West Coast. Uh, she's up 7 a.m. It's a nice little 15-minute devotional, um, and it's got she's she's got a, a solid nugget from the Lord that she always shares, really personal um, and always an encouragement. So I encourage you to um, to uh, look for her. Um, her uh, handle here on HAPS is uh, Rebecca Ryan. Now there's two Rebecca Ryans. She, there's a Rebecca Ryan and a Rebecca Ryan one. She's just plain Rebecca Ryan. That's her. So if you want to uh, be notified that she's coming on. If you want to receive notification, look for Rebecca Ryan. Okay. And, uh, and so that's, that's her name. Okay. And uh, so God bless you all. Hey, Nancy, God bless you. Hey, Matt, you had a CT scan, Matt result today, which indicated, Oh, okay. Father God, right now we bring Matt's Matt before you, Father God, we ask, Oh Lord, you know, what's going on 
in that place in his brain. Father, I ask, Lord, that you would have mercy on him right now, God. I pray that you would touch that mass in his brain, Father, that you would completely dissolve it, Lord. Clear, clear it up, Lord. We speak healing and wholeness. Shalom to Matt's brain in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, for watching over this dad and this husband, Lord. Uh, the family needs him now more than ever, God. So we just ask for complete healing and restoration of his brain in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. We'll keep praying for you, Matt. Keep us posted. Um, trusting the Lord for complete healing for you and a complete removal of that mass in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and give you his shalom, wholeness in body, mind, and spirit. Amen. Okay, see you tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. for me, 9 p.m. for Jason, um, and I think it's 6 p.m. for Rick tomorrow night, I believe, I believe. So, but keep your notifications on, all right? Love you all. Take care. God bless.